getting a little dark over there. Hopefully it don't start to rain, you know? What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We are on the way, as you guys can see, to go get that 72 Chevelle project. We got the trailer loaded up. We're gonna pick this car up. It does not run yet, but it will soon. So hopefully, by the time we come back, we're actually gonna do the transmission lines today. Um, and maybe, uh, we'll probably put fluids in. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely put fluids in for sure. But we'll not get, we will not get the first start. I gotta call the tuner over. He's gotta unlock the ECU get a nice tune for it and everything and then we got to make sure there's no leaks and things like that so it'll be a little bit it'll probably be at least one more video before you guys see that first start you know i want to see the first start. i want to hear the first start so but we'll see you guys once we get down to the shop we're we back at the house you guys back at the house got her loaded up we got to back her in real quick onto the lift we got those train lines to do and i will show you that exhaust real quick but let me unhook everything gotta pull these straps off and uh, hook up that winch because that winch is our best friend well, let me give you a little sneak peek you guys can see all right let's get to it come on you bastard Woo. hold up Try this at home, y'all. Go away, rain. Go away, goddammit. Go away. Clean, clean, huh, boys? Not too shabby, y'all. Not too bad at all, huh? Not bad at all, boys. Looks good, looking real good. Let's go ahead and start with these tranny lines. Um, you guys can see, always in a pain in the butt. But look, we got the banjo fittings on. On the tranny already, I don't know if you guys can see in there, it's kind of dark. Sorry about the lighting. But we got the Banjo AN fittings here, a dash six, already installed on the tranny side. So, problem is, we have the trans cooler. We're gonna go off the radiator here. We're not gonna run a separate one. It's gonna go straight to the radiator, to this Griffin. But it has them on the driver's side and transmission has them on the passenger side so we'll either go around the back side or come down and then come over so we'll see what we're gonna have to figure out here but I do want to show you guys the stuff I'm gonna be using today um, it's a little bit more affordable than your AN stuff I should say it's a little bit more affordable than your braided lines um, I've used the braided lines in the past they look great but they are expensive, you guys. So I figured we'd save some money on this uh, on these training lines and go with the hydraulic hose itself without the braided. Because um, you're probably not going to be able to see them very well. I'm going to try to tuck them nice and neat. So it won't make a difference. It won't make a difference. So, and they're a little bit more affordable. It's, it's probably about, I don't know, $3 difference a foot. If you can imagine that, times how many feet we're going to use here. But let me go show you guys. Back at the bench, you guys. Now this, this is the stuff I was talking about. This guy stuff here is the Dash 6 hose for specifically hydraulic fluid pertaining to transmission fluid, which is more or less the same. Now, now we're going to be using 
push style lock fittings on this guy here. So basically you just push this in, lube it up, and then it locks in with this barb fitting. But what I like to do is a little extra safety measure is these clamps. These clamps right here are specific to these hose, I should say, because what it does is you're gonna need a special pair of pliers to lock this in. It's really just to secure that fitting in that hose from coming undone. Just because it is hydraulic fluid, it's, I feel like it needs to be a little bit more secure than just a push lock. I mean, in reality, it would hold just fine, but I just like to do this for a safety measure so it doesn't pop out for whatever reason. But these are sold separately, you guys. So if you guys are doing these lines, um, depending on your speed shop, but I got them at my local speed shop. Um, these are also about 90 bucks or something like that. If you guys don't have a set of these, you're specifically for these clamps to get those on. But like I said, all you need is just some lubricant and push that on. That's it. And then these guys as well, these are your transmission radiator fitting. This is actually going to go on the radiator and it'll allow you to screw on that dash six. I believe these are from XRP, I want to say it is. Let me see here. Yeah, XRP fittings. So if you guys are interested in those, check them out, XRP fittings. Now, you guys want to know what the cost was? Total cost was about 208 bucks. Oh, 218, I'm sorry. 218, if I can focus on that thing. 218 for all these fittings, hoses and everything. This is about 20 feet of hose here. Just because we're going to go over that transmission, or I should say the back side of the transmission, and then back on the other side. But yeah, if you guys are interested, man, this is kind of a good and easy way to do it. Like I said, this stuff here for the hose is really what's going to be the most pricey. I mean, the fittings are somewhat as well. But if you look, that there is $5.62 a foot. Now, if you go with the braided stuff which i've done too and then you're gonna need different fittings for those you go with that stuff and that's eight dollars in like 50 cents a square foot you're it's almost almost three dollars that's a huge saving so we went with this stuff here just save a little bit of money but let's go ahead and make these up real quick and then start routing them damn you well boys starting to rain and Ran into a little bit of issues. Yo, yeah, oh yeah, look, the drive shaft's off already. But this is really something I probably should have did when I didn't have exhaust, I didn't have a drive shaft, or the transmission was mounted. So really can't get to those banjo fittings. I got one on there, but there's no way it's gonna be tight, and I don't like that one bit. I'm not gonna rely on finger tightness. So we're gonna drop the trans, or I should say the cross member, let it hang a little bit, and then actually see if we can get those fittings on because that's not gonna happen. But I think we're gonna call it a day for now because it is getting late and we're out of daylight and you gotta feed the family, y'all. I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, boys, we are back back it is the next morning got some sunlight got a little bit of sun out here not as cloudy or rainy but got the tranny pretty much lowered there all it did was undo that side and it'll drop it just enough for us to get our hands in there and work a little bit but it occurred to me i need to show you guys how easy these clamps work um let's put a, an end on this side and i'll show you how easy squeezy that is First things first, you're gonna take some assembly lube, lubricate your fitting. No matter what kind of oil, you can even WD-40 if that's all you got. Go ahead and lube that up real good. Now we wanna make sure that this fitting goes all the way to the top. That hose goes all the way to that last bar up there. I see a lot of these, these guys will do them and they'll press them like halfway on and then they'll end up popping out. And that's why they pop out because they're not all the way seated down you can also always heat this hose up a little bit if you have to to try to get it in there a little easier but i'm not going to for this purpose just because it gets once you heat that hose up man it's really hard to 
keep your hand on it so we're just gonna keep working that in there and then once i got it to where it's almost all the way down seated you can find yourself a nice flat surface to push that fitting up against and then it'll get you even further down i'm gonna push it up against the exhaust up here and see if we can use that as uh almost like a bench All right, you guys, next up, we got this little clamp right here. This is those clamps I was telling you about earlier. Now, these really just lock in place. They just, you got to grab this both in. Let me grab my pliers. And you just take and you put one in on the further side here. And one in up in here. I like to get them as, right, right there. We're choking it, but not all the way up to the top. And you, all you gotta do is squeeze and you hear that it snaps right in just like that locks in and that just really gives you that extra protection of for the pressure i should say if, to make sure that thing doesn't pop out of there just like that i like these lines too i mean they're not the prettiest like the braided stuff but they're easy to work with especially if you're underneath the car and you have to redo a line or you have to run lines and then do them at the car or whatever reason because the an fittings with the braided line those have to be like set up on a vice and all that and those are just a little bit more of a pain in the butt to try to do on the car i mean you can i've done them but it's not ideal so that's why i definitely like to use these when i can for transmission and stuff like that not only that you'll never really see these lines so save some money go with these or go with the braided stuff if you guys want to spend the money I'm going to put these on and I'll show you guys once I route everything, we'll route them up to the top and go from there. clean clean y'all i'm digging it digging it digging it but i will say this it was a pain in the butt you guys it was a pain in the butt a lot of trial and error it always is um i get really picky and i can't make up my mind i really was trying to get them up and over through that hump over there through the top of the headers through that top of that bow housing up there i was really just trying to ride them up there but there was just really nothing to hold on to up there to keep them away from those manifolds and the last thing i want to do is have that thing resting on that exhaust on that manifold or should I say the header so we went this route here it's a straight shot right here it'll never hit the flywheel just so you guys know it'll never hit the flywheel it's clamped right here and then it's clamped here we just use the existing bolt from the oil pan just like that and then came back around got him clamped there up and over but we do got to do the top one still but uh that one's done the bottom one there is done but i do want to show you guys this i try to utilize as much as possible like a factory style so you guys see the tape there that tape there is holding on the little christmas tree clip and it just pops right into the transmission transmission's got a hole right there and just pops in and you don't have to worry about uh, trying to figure out how to put a bolt in there or whatever. I try to use those as much as possible. Let me show you what I'm talking about. They're just these little Christmas style tree clips here. So it is. So it is, y'all. This little stud guy like that. You, they usually use them on harnesses and stuff. And you obviously put them on the wire and then you tape the ends to it and it basically acts like a built-in clip 
for whatever you're putting it with but that works really well a little tip there but definitely a nightmare with these um fittings up here definitely should have ran these prior to putting the tranny in but it is what it is but i have to put everything back real quick as far as the cross member goes exhaust we got to connect the exhaust back up and then we'll go to the top and finish up the top and you guys see what it looks like here's the hose that's got to go to that top radiator port here uh, we're going to go ahead and cut it down to length i'm just going to use these guys here they're actually believe it or not they're uh wire cutters like really thick gauge wire but they work really good on hoses too so i'm just going to kind of measure it out here and then cut it to length what you looking at dog what you looking at nova so this is what i was talking about you see how it's a little bit easier to do it here versus trying to struggle and try to get your hand in the engine bay and put that on not only that i cheated this time a little bit brought the heat gun out because these 90 fittings these 90 degree fittings are harder to press on because you have really no leverage to push up against so heating up that hose definitely helps and then throwing the crimp the crimp on good to go we'll feed that back in screw it on see what it looks like just like that boys nice and clean looks good we went ahead and threw that fitting on there along with our 90 crimped in and everything ready to go but you guys can see man these you can't even see this thing you can barely notice that it's there looks good looks like it should but that's it y'all lines are ran so far so good we got to add their fluids though we do got to add tranny fluid oil i mean you name it everything we got to put that cover back on i already painted it got to put that cover back on got to got to finish our battery wiring here and we got a few things on the inside we got to button up too we got the interior still to put back together in here along with center console and things like that let me show you guys real quick see got a few little things to button up in here oh we also got that all kick panels over there as well glove box cover a few wires here and there but it is there guys almost almost ready to hit the streets how's my hair you guys how's my hair it's all right i've been crawling around on this car all day but guys subscribe 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 hit the like button and hit the bell for notifications and you guys already know stay wrenching